Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Lowe with today's lesson. We are looking at 7-1. So when we focus on 7-1 in our notebooks, we are going to write 7-1. We are going to do a super quick review. This gets us into our lesson on estimating sums and differences for fractions. So what we're talking about here today, gang, is when we look at a fraction, we got to understand two things. Number one, that a fraction is really just a part divided by a whole. It is a part over a whole. So when I look at the fraction like one fourth, my part is one, my whole is four. That top number has a very specific name. It is called the numerator. And the bottom number has a name. It is called the denominator. So numerator, denominator. Just as a quick example, if I've got a pizza, because who doesn't like pizza, and I cut that pizza up into four slices, and I eat one of those four, I have eaten one part out of a total of four slices. One fourth, that is my part over my whole. So without further ado, let's get into today's lesson on estimating sums and differences. When we talk estimating, we are talking benchmarks. And the benchmarks we are going to be using today are going to be really, really critical. These are three benchmarks when we're dealing with fractions that you are going to have to make sure you understand. Benchmarks are pretty simple. It is all fractions are going to get rounded to either a zero, one half, or one whole. Zero, one half, one whole. We're trying to say, okay, is this fraction closer to zero, closer to half, closer to whole? Sometimes, and this will be for the plus kids, sometimes you'll be able to use intermittent benchmarks, which would be like one fourth, that is between one or zero and a half, and then three fourths, that is between one half and one whole. But for the most part, most of the time in sixth grade, we are going to focus on just those three zero one half one whole so let's get into our practice now in visions just like everything else that we do in envisions they like to use models so we're going to use a model first and then i'll show you how to do it without the model uh, we want to know is seven eighths closer to zero one half or one whole so we use a number line for our model so here's my zero here's my one halfway between is going to be one half when i start looking at seven eighths I know zero is going to be represented by zero eighths. One whole is going to be represented by eight eighths. And that means one half. Well, that's just if I look at my denominator, half of my denominator is four. That would be four eighths. So now it gets even easier. I just need to figure out where seven eighths would be on my number line. Well, 7 eighths is going to be almost 8 eighths. It's going to be right around there. So obviously, 7 eighths is closer to one whole. When we look at 5 twelfths, so now I know 0 will be 0 twelfths. One whole would be 12 twelfths. And one half would be, well, half of 12 is 6. So one half would be 6 twelfths. And I just got to look at, well, where's 5 twelfths? Well, 5 twelfths is going to be close to 6 twelfths. So 5 twelfths is closer to a half than it is to 0 or 1. So I would say 5 twelfths is close to 1 half. Now I want you to look at something here. This is going to be really important. We got to remember this. When I take 7 eighths and I say it's closest to 1, remember my math problem was, oops, wrong page. I turned the wrong page, my bad. Um, my math problem is 7 eighths minus 5 twelfths. So that 1 that I said is for 7 eighths has to go first. When I look at 5 twelfths, when I do 7 eighths minus 5 twelfths, that's going to be the same as saying 1 minus a half. And 1 minus a half is a half. So it's really that simple. Today's math Every single answer we have is either going to be zero, one half, one whole, one and a half if we're adding, or at the most, two. 
if you can look at any of those answers, that's that's kind of what we're what we're thinking we're going to be looking at. So let's use our number model. Let's use our uh, uh, number line as an example here. So I've got zero, one whole, and I've got one half. You guys should be writing this down in your notebook, all of you, right there, you guys. So in my zero, when I look at my first fraction of nine tenths. This is going to be 0 tenths. This will be 10 tenths. And then halfway would be 5 tenths because half of 10 is 5. So obviously 9 tenths is almost 10 tenths. So it's going to be over there somewhere. So 9 tenths is going to estimate down to 1. When we look at 5, 6, well, this will be 0, 6. This will be 6. 6, and this would be half of 6, which is 3, 6. Well, 5, 6, again, is going to be somewhere over here. Okay, it's almost 6, 6. So that is also going to estimate down to 1. And then, obviously, 1 plus 1 is 2. So 9 tenths plus 5, 6 is about 2. Any questions so far? Oh, I just dropped my pen. Hold on one second. Okay, there. Now we're good. Aren't you glad you got this video of me so you could see me drop my pen? All right, let's go to the next question now. Next question. Now we have 11 eighteenths and 2 ninths. So I'm going to show you this two different ways. So we're still going to start with the model because I like the visual picture. So we got 0 eighteenths. I've got 18 eighteenths. And then half of that would be 9 eighteenths. So when I look at 11 eighteenths, if I'm using the number model up here, I'm going to say 11 eighteenths. Well, this would be 9, 10, 11 might be somewhere around here. I don't know. But it's going to be closer to a half than it is to one whole. So 11 eighteenths is closer to 9 eighteenths. So 11 eighteenths is going to estimate to one half. Here's what you want to look at. If I take my denominator and I start there and I know half of 18 is 9 and then I look at my numerator and I say well is 11 closer to 0 closer to 9 or closer to 18 11 is much closer to 9 which means it is almost one half now let's do a subtraction problem here now so now we've got 2 ninths this would be 0 ninths. This would be 9 ninths. And then this is the kind of the funky one. Half of 9 really is 4.5. And normally we don't write fractions like this. But when we're doing benchmarks, I think it's okay. Because now I just have to look at this number 2. And I have to say, okay, is 2 closer to 0 or closer to 4.5? Well, 2 is only 2 away from 0 but it's two and a half away from four and a half, which makes two ninths closer to zero. And then when I do my subtraction, well, that equals one half. So 11 eighteenths minus two ninths is going to be about one half. So again, you can still use the number line. That still works very effectively. If you look at the denominators, you can also cut that denominator in half and then compare that with your numerator to kind of give you an idea of whether it's going to be zero, a half, or a whole. Let's try another example. All right, I got 1 16th and I've got 2 15ths. Well, let's look at 16. Half of 16, whoops, is not 12. Half of 16 is 8. So I want to ask myself, is 1 closer to 0, closer to 8, or in this case, closer to 16? Because it would be 0 eighths or 0 sixteenths, 8 sixteenths, or 16 sixteenths. Well, 1 sixteenth is much closer to 0, so 1 sixteenth is going to estimate down to 0. I would do the same exact thing with 15. If I take 15, not 12, come on, Mr. Lowe. If I take 15 and I divide 15 by 2, well, 15 divided by 2 is 7.5, 7.5. Now all i got to do is look at this number 2. 
and say, okay, is two closer to zero fifteenths, seven and a half fifteenths, or fifteen fifteenths? Well, two is much closer to zero, so this one also is going to be zero. Hey, here's a question for you. What's zero plus zero? That's zero. Good job. One more. I'm going to let you guys do this one. So we've got 37 fortieths and 50 or 20 minus 26 fiftieths. Copy it down in your notebook, solve it, pause the video, and we'll let you answer it right now. All right. So hopefully you did just that. We got 37 fortieths. Well, if we take 40, and I divide 40 by 20 by 2, not 20. I get 20. So now I'm asking myself, well, is 37 closer to 0, closer to 20, or closer to 40? 37 is definitely closer to 40, so that's going to be a 1. I look at 50, and I divide 50 into 2. That's 25. Now all you got to do is say, okay, well, let's take a look at 26. Is 26 closer to 0, closer to 25, or closer to 50? Well, 26 is much closer to 25. That means this guy is going to go to a half. And when I subtract 1 minus a half, I get 1 half. So here's your deal for today, guys. You are working on 7-1. You've got a practice buddy, and you've got a quick check. If you have questions, please raise your hand during class time. Come on up to the table. Let's talk. We'll figure it out. All right. Make it a great day. The choice is all yours. Have a great one.